Hi, my name is Michael Burgess, and I'm the managing attorney of MBNA. I'm also a certified legal specialist in California workers' compensation and a trial attorney. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about some recent case law. This case is um, Casado versus Kaiser. This is a case that's dealing with panel qualified medical examiners' compliance and whether their their report is admissible um, if they didn't comport with the law and they had an improper legal theory. But before I get into the to the meat of that case, let me lay down some fundamentals uh, for the viewers here. One, remember that in a California workers' compensation case that the compensation for that is based on a doctor finding that you sustain permanent disability. And what happens is in most of these cases is you got an injured worker who's treating with what's called a primary treating physician. That doctor will issue a comprehensive final report articulating what the injuries are, whether they believe they have permanent disability, if so, what percentage, what the causation apportionment is, etc. Now, if that treating physician writes a very good report for the injured worker, pretty much the insurance company or the defendant is going to object and request a neutral state doctor to hopefully find a different opinion and reduce their liability. Uh, inversely, if that doctor writes a, a bad report for the injured worker, hopefully the injured worker will object and request a neutral doctor. Uh, and if they're represented, that attorney very well should object and request a neutral doctor. But then you get this neutral doctor. This is a state doctor, um, and he's... He or she has evaluated your client and they write a bad report. Now, as an attorney who goes to trial and litigates lots of cases, this is the, bro this is the meat of, and the bulk of all of my trials. It is treating physician says this, neutral doctor says this, the neutral doctor is horrible, not substantial, washing out my, my, my uh, poor injured client. Now, what this case decided was really two issues. One was um, Labor Code 4628B requires that a physician, quote, disclose the name and qualifications of each person who performed any service in connection with the report, including diagnostic studies and other than its uh, uh, clerical preparation. So what that code says is that if anybody is doing anything in preparation of that report, they need to identify who, who it is, what they did, and what their qualifications are. And in this case, it looks like the doctor had somebody else do the grip and, and, and other measurements, range of motion uh, uh, testing, and didn't disclose who really did it. Um, and the injured worker's attorney was arguing that makes the report um, not only not substantial, but inadmissible. Uh, also, this doctor basically said, you know, as far as the injuries are concerned, I don't see any objective signs of, uh, of uh, impairment, so I'm not gonna give uh, this person any rateable disability. So, so the, they were, the injured worker's attorney was purporting to say that that's not a correct legal uh, theory or analysis because just because somebody may not have objective findings doesn't mean they're not entitled to rateable disability. Uh, there are subjective complaints and impacts on the AD, what's called the activities of daily living. An injured worker might very well be entitled to compensation even if there is no quote unquote objective evidence, MRIs, x-rays, indisputable objective evidence, okay? So the injured worker went to trial on this and this case now holds the following. If the doctors don't comply with the law, uh, particularly Labor Code 4628B or frankly any law uh, regarding what they're legally obligated to do, that report is inadmissible. Okay? And it also says that the court has jurisdiction to really determine whether that doctor is relying on an on a incorrect legal theory, and if so, that report is inadmissible. Uh, fundamentally though, uh, from a trial attorney standpoint, how can the trial judge determine whether something is admissible or inadmissible unless they take it in for identification purposes, read it, see if it complies with the law, and if it doesn't, they're essentially determined that it's not substantial medical evidence. So whether they say it's admissible and not substantial or inadmissible, really two sides of the same uh, coin because the injured, the, the injured worker shouldn't get an award based or shouldn't get... Um, uh, there shouldn't be a trial decision based upon that medical evidence. So once again, this is Casado versus Kaiser, and this is essentially reiterating that the neutral doctor has legal requirements um, and needs to, to adhere to those legal uh, requirements and have proper legal theories um, for issuing their opinion. Uh, and if they don't, it's not admissible and definitely not substantial medical evidence. So if you're an injured worker and you're a viewer and you're uh, watching this video and you have some questions, here's the take home. The neutral doctors write a lot of bullshit reports.
Okay. Uh, excuse my language, but I read QME reports and AME reports and neutral doctor reports and treating physician reports, and I very rarely see a good substantial report that complies with the law. So what an, a, a, an attorney can do in this situation is they can substantiate one of the reports and go to trial and get the other report that is a bad report for the injured worker who's saying they don't have an injury or they don't have disability or they're not entitled to future medical. A good, sharp trial attorney could substantiate their treating physician and know that they have the tools and case law to support getting that report either not admitted into evidence or thrown out for being not substantial. And if you substantiate your treating physician, the judge can issue a trial decision uh, based upon that f uh, favorable medical evidence so long as it is based on reasonable medical probability and constitutes substantial medical evidence. So I hope that this uh, quick uh, uh, video on this recent case law of Casado versus Kaiser was helpful. Uh, I know you might have some questions. Uh, it is often uh, very confusing and complicated, um, but I assure you if you're watching this, my office does have the answers and we're here standing by and we can answer any questions absolutely free of charge and all of our consultations are 100% free of charge. Once again, if you have questions, we have the answers. Please give us a call.